On this week's show, the Georgia Southern baseball team returns home. We have highlights and spring football continues. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, Georgia Southern baseball, we have a little bit of football coming up from spring football drills. We'll hear from uh, Coach Tyson Summers, but before we do that, let's get on the diamond and talk a little bit about the Georgia Southern baseball team who had gone into this past weekend rolling them right along, looked pretty good, and then they come back home. You think, hey, you get a little home cooking. Instead, they get swept at home. Did rebound with a victory over Savannah State and on the road as well with uh, Charleston. A lot of games and not a lot of time, but maybe they've got a chance to right the ship after getting swept at home. Well, overall, Georgia Southern still uh, uh, chugging along. A lot of young arms getting thrown out there. And uh, unfortunately for the Eagles, the games they won this week out of conference, the games that they lost in conference, such a good start for the Eagles. Uh, that sweep on the road at App State to start conference play seems like it was forever ago now. Home really hasn't been home cooking, like you said. Just a, a couple of wins in conference for the Eagles at home. Texas State coming into town, one of the teams expected to be one of the big contenders in the Sun Belt. They were tied with Georgia Southern coming into J.I. Clements Stadium. Georgia Southern in it in all three games. Unfortunately for them, not able to finish it off in any of those threes. They dropped all three and now back down into, I guess you could say, the middle of the Sun Belt, but still plenty of baseball left to play. Another big three-game series coming up this weekend. Hopefully the Eagles can rebound. Let's get to one of the bright spots. Savannah State, they're able to hit some, hit the ball around a little bit, score the most runs of the season. Let's get out and see how things went. Georgia Southern returning home as they played host to Savannah State. Pick things up, Eagles up one nothing and make it two nothing. The wild pitch allows Cal Baker to score. Georgia Southern out to the early lead on the hill for Georgia Southern. Lawson Humphreys ends the second with the strikeout. Move to the fourth, Savannah State gets on the board. Runner on second for Ryan McCraney, who strokes one through the left side. The single allows Trey Sykes to come home. Eagles now up only two to one, but in the bottom half, Georgia Southern gets the bats going. Cal Baker drives in two with a single to center. Georgia Southern up 4-1. Moments later, Logan Baldwin delivers, and he's going to play two more with the single to left center, 6-1 as the Eagles roll on to the victory by a final count of 16 to one. Well, next up, Louisiana Lafayette coming to call one of the teams that were picked among the top in the league. So maybe they can win that series. Rebound, we'll have some highlights from that series for you next week. Well, let's stay outside and let's move over to the Banks of beautiful Eagle Creek, where head coach Tyson Summers and his crew blasting the music, getting in the faces and getting a, a, a lot of fast-paced action out there on the football field. Your thoughts on what we can talk about as far as spring practice goes to this point? Well, overall, it's more of the same. You know, there's a new coaching staff, there's new terminology, a few new plays to learn, maybe some guys in new positions, but spring football is what it is every year. A lot of times there's more to discuss on the fans and on our end of the media than there really is on the field because at the end of the day it's just guys competing for jobs, learning new jobs, coaches in this case learning how to coach up the new guys and we'll get to see maybe a little more behind the curtain in the spring game next week be able to see a, a couple of full speed 11 on 11 plays but really this week it was more about some former Eagles pro day this week uh, where some guys from the 2015 team even a few from the 2014 team that senior class getting out there showing their stuff trying to make it to the next level your thoughts on that as far as the pro day goes I know we saw we knew there was going to be your Antoine Williamses and and some of the other guys that from this year's class but as you mentioned some of the older ones back as well well anybody just trying to hang on get a shot obviously there's not quite the same minor league structure that there is in baseball or even in basketball but there are leagues out there whether they're arena leagues semi-pro leagues even maybe a couple overseas or an international competition somewhere but it's good to see those former eagles not only back uh, at their former uh, place of 
not employment, but place in competition. Uh, but but good to see that they still have the heart for the game and really good to see some of the current Eagles who won't be going anywhere anytime soon out on the sidelines cheering everybody on. A lot of attention was there. If anybody got the right numbers, got the right distances, put up the right amount of reps, 15 out of 32 NFL teams there. So hopefully at least a handful of them put on a show. And as long as you keep turning out the players, I mean, the Georgia Southern players like Jarek McKinnon, Darius Eubanks, guys are still a J.J. Wilcox or in the pros. The more you get, the more looks you're probably going to get at the old 40 times out there, the shuttle drills and things like that. Let's get out and see, first of all, a little bit from spring practice, what head coach Tyson Summers had to say, and then go out and see how things went from the pro day. Well, it's like anything else. We're trying to make sure uh, that we're doing the right things, and we have. I think we've done a better job the last, you know, three or four practices of being more physical and being tougher and trying to be more mentally sharp. Um, we took a day today where we took off and uh, tried to make it more of a mental day than anything else. And uh, what we don't want to do is when we do that, also wind up looking up and losing our pace, losing our tempo. And I thought we had done that for a period or two, and uh, so we were trying to get it back right. We spent a large part of the first hour practice making corrections for things and it, making it more of a walkthrough, a teach. And, uh, and, and we've, we've done a lot of that in pre-practice. We've done a lot of that uh, at other times. We haven't necessarily done it during a practice. So that was the first time. So once we left kind of those periods of corrections and teach, uh, we didn't have the tempo that we needed to have. Uh, from an offensive standpoint, we didn't have the tempo we needed to have from a defensive standpoint. Uh, we weren't flying around, and uh, and so what we wound up doing was trying to gear it up for them a little bit and get them back on the right page. I think we did that, and I think we finished the last three or four periods closer to what we needed to be. And we need to continue to do a better job with our communication pre-snap on both sides of the ball, but details of our assignment across the board. I think the thing that we'd like to see, you know, and, and I can tell you probably a little bit better here in another week or two, but. I think the thing that all those teams and this one has right now is they do, they've got good leadership. They've got guys that try to do the right thing. They've got guys that want to compete. They've got guys that want to buy in. Uh, you're not having to create a new culture. And, uh, and when you talk about those bowl teams that we had and the championship teams, it really came down to character and culture more than anything else. And I do think we got guys with a lot of character that are bringing that out and some of the guys that need a little bit more of it. And that's what you want. That's what leadership is. As of the time we're going to air with this, the word has not come down whether or not they're going to have indeed play the spring game at Statesboro High School. I know they're hoping to hurry up and get everything together where they're able to play on the turf at Paulson Stadium. Things are looking pretty good out there. We will pass it on. Mike will have it in the paper. We'll also have it for you in next week's Eagles Nest. But that, for now, that'll wrap things up. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.